Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio, and today we're going to talk about me. Yes, we're going to talk about me today. I'm not going to talk about anybody else. I'm not going to talk about sales. Victor is going to talk about Victor. All joking aside, people keep asking me, said, Victor, you know, how did you get into sales? You know, how did it happen? You know, tell me your story about being in sales. Well, let me try to give it to you uh, a short version of a very long story. Born and raised in Chicago. My family's originally from Puerto Rico, but I was born and raised in Chicago. If you know the northwest side of Chicago, let's say if you know where the uh, Cabrini Green housing projects were, uh, Humble Park, maybe even Bucktown, uh, within that area, you get the idea. And back then, it was just as dangerous, if not as eh, more dangerous than it is today, actually, I think. But again, that's my opinion. And it was a very dangerous place, a very dangerous time. And so, you know, how I navigated all that, I couldn't tell you. I got lucky in so many ways, and I have friends who weren't as lucky. And my mother was always the greatest motivating force. She was like, go to school, get the education, get the J-O-B. And if you didn't get the, you know, if you didn't listen to mom, you got the sandal. Or for my Spanish uh, listeners here, la chancleta, right? So she was, she was like the great motivator. And so I remember uh, finishing high school, I was thinking of just like, that's it, I'm done, I'm not going to college, maybe I'll take a year off. And my mother said, essentially, if I decide not to go to college, I'd have to go to work at the factory with my father. Now, I had been at that factory where he works, and it was what I call, it wasn't even a blue collar job, it was like a black collar job, because it was just like dirty, I mean, just dirty, I mean, just a place, you know, it was, it was just like the industrial revolution, you know, minus three, it was just that bad. And so I decided, eh, I think I'd rather go to college. I think I'd rather deal with that pain. And so I decided to get an electrical engineering degree. And I'm often asked, why electrical engineering? Why not aeronautical, civil, mechanical, or any other? And one is that I understood, you know, you know electricity, electrical, that was easy to understand. But I also knew that electrical engineers made good money when they graduated from college. And so I was like, you know, profit motive oriented. You know, I was all about trying to make more money. And that's why I got an engineering degree. Did I do engineering because I loved it? Hell no, I didn't do it. I did it because I wanted to make more money. And that usually shocks people because they're like, ah, oh, you're supposed to pursue your passion. Well, I didn't know that back then. And so I get my engineering degree. It took me about five, five and a half years to graduate, longer than most people because I had a Chicago public school education. And when I went to college, I realized how poor my education really was. And so I had to take, uh, the first year I had to take a lot of what I call college remedial courses, just to really get up to the level of everybody else, which is why it took me five and a half years to graduate. I graduated with a 2.63 grade point average. Let me say it again, 2.63 grade point average. Now, pessimists will see that as a C plus, optimists like myself will see it as a B minus. But at the end of the day, it's never about a grade point average, it's all about can you grind, can you hustle, right? And so I graduated from college, and I remember I graduated and I was making 28 five, 28,500 a year. Now back then, you know, that was bank, that was big dollars, you know, and it was more than I'd ever had, or earned rather, and so, I you know, got into engineering, started doing it. Within three years, I realized I hated engineering. Here's the interesting part. I was making good money. I was making good money, but I just didn't like what I was doing. So you know, this quiet discontent, that's what I call it, a quiet discontent began to build. And I started searching around for a different career. And I tried a lot of other things like application engineering, like a technical support person. But when I found sales, ah, that's when, it, that's when it hit for me. And the way it happened was that as a, I started doing a lot of what they call application engineering design work, and I would travel with salespeople to help them do the presentations. In other words, the salespeople knew enough to get them in trouble, but I was there to answer all the technical questions. And the company I was working with at the time when I became a salesperson was a wireless company out of Minnesota. Yeah, for sure, you betcha. It was out of Minnesota. Uh, great company, I believe they're still around. It's called EF Johnson. And so it's a wireless company. And so I would travel into the regions with these salespeople. And I remember there was one uh, design that I put together. 
Uh, it was, I, I believe it was for Iowa Power and Gas Company in Iowa, right? And it was a huge monster wireless system. We were competing against Motorola, and I was the the, the prime engineer, the you know the um, I guess the first and foremost engineer on the project who made all the decisions, and I was in charge of the whole design. By the time I finished my design, it was a five million dollar project. And so we had to go down to Iowa. We had to go do the presentations, the dog and pony. Again, the salesperson did the introductions, talked a little bit about the, uh, the high-level stuff. But I had to come in here, uh, in there, and explain in front of a panel of people why our design was better than, at that time, we were competing against Motorola. And so competing against Motorola, I had to explain why my design differed from theirs and why I thought it was better. And so that was quite challenging. Fast forward about a month, two months later, these are long sales cycles. You know, when you've got five million, that's a long sales cycle when it comes to closing a deal. And so uh, we got the deal. You know, we got the deal. So I remember his name was Ken. Ken told me, Victor, we got the deal. And we're like high-fiving each other. We're excited. Oh, my God, $5 million. We're like, ugh. And that was my first large system that I sold as the, you know, the principal engineer. And so I was happy. I was like, hey, just giddy, man, just giddy. And I remember I went over to another engineer, uh, uh, one of those senior engineers. Every company has a senior engineer. And this guy's name was Roy. And I go, I was telling Roy, we won the deal, we won the deal. I'm so excited, so excited. And he said, well, good for you, Victor. And I said, yep, uh, I just got back from lunch because I had just gotten back from lunch with Ken. And that's why I was so happy. And he said the following, and this changed my life. <laughs> this statement changed my life. Again, after lunch with Ken, we were celebrating. We were high-fiving each other. I run over to Roy, and I tell him the great news. And I tell about the great lunch we just had, and we were just celebrating. I was in the greatest mood ever. And Roy said something to the effect, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember the exact words, but what, what followed really changed my life. He said, Victor, he said, let me ask you a question. I said, yeah, yeah, what, Roy? He said, uh, how, much, how much money do you think Ken spent on you for that dinner or for that lunch? And I said, well, I don't know, but it was a nice steakhouse, you know, so I know he spent a little bit of money. He said, well, let's say it's $50. I said, sure, man. Okay, so he spent $50. Great. You know, $50 steak is a $50 steak, whatever. But Roy said, then Roy asked the second follow question, and this was the game changer. He said, Victor, how much money do you think Ken will make on that deal, on that system that you designed? And man, you could, I just fell, and I go, you know, just like my mind went blank, I fell backwards, and I was like, uh, I don't know, Roy, how much? He says, well, conservatively, he'll make about $50,000. I said, what? He says, yes, Victor, he'll make about $50,000. So you're happy about a $50 steak. He's happy about a $50,000 check. And I remember walking away, you know, all the, all the euphoria was gone. And I remember going, what the hell? And so it wasn't uh, too much time after that that I said, you know what? I really need to look at this whole sales game a little bit closer because I really, I believed I really did the majority of selling. Now, I can't take this away from Ken. Did he find the business? Did he set up the contact? Did he get us into the bid? Absolutely. But when it came to the design, where the rubber met the road, I closed it. And so sure enough about, I'm going to fast forward this part. And again, I don't remember the time frame, so I have to make some of this up. Like I think it was like three to six months in there. Uh, I got an offer to be a sales guy in Latin America. They were looking for somebody with a technical background, understood the products, the wireless systems, and can speak Spanish. Muy bien. I said, that's me. And that's actually how I got into sales. And I had a great sales mentor at the time. His name was Jose Santana, probably the smoothest salesperson I'd ever met. And I remember traveling with him throughout Latin America. And I just remember how customers loved him, how he provided that value. He had relationships selling down. He had, he had a sales EQ before EQ was even understood. I mean, this guy can just relate. He could empathize with his customers, and customers just loved him. And every year, he would kill his quota. He'd just murder his quota. He was one of the best salespeople I've ever been around. And again, I really learned a lot from him. So that's how I got into sales. And I haven't looked back ever since. Right now, again, obviously, I do a lot of sales training because I love sales. I believe that 
If you're listening to me right now and you're thinking of going into sales or you're just starting in sales, I am telling you it is a great career. If you find the right company with the right product, with the right management team, with a great compensation plan, sales is the place to be. You can make so much money if you just find those right combinations, right company, right product, right compensation, right management team. If you can find the right company, man, you will sell. So don't give up. Move forward. Be great in selling. I know you can do it. When I first started out, I struggled, but guess what? I got better as time went on and so can you. So that's it for this Sales Influence Podcast. Don't forget to leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Let me know what you think. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, check out my sales training website. You know the deal, seminarsonselling.com, where you'll find great training videos. Look, if you're not using my videos to train and get better, then you're not moving forward. So check them out. Let me know what you think. Also, I have a workshop, a public workshop called the Sales Mastery Intensive. 12 hours in a room with me. Only 12 people so I can give you the attention you deserve. And we're going to go through 12 sales modules. What's the end objective? By the time you walk out of there, you'll know how to sell using your own specific customized sales process. Lastly, I want to thank you for listening. This is Victor Antonio, always reminding you, selling ain't hard when you know how. Take care. Every manager can feel it. The difference between a motivated, value-driven sales team and one that's stuck in a rut. CEOs know the difference too. They can see it clearly in the profit and loss columns. The question is, how do you get your team to this elite level? Is there something extra you can do to break through the remaining resistance and equip them with the right mindset to grow your business? Yes, there is. But you're not going to do it with one of those cheesy inspirational speakers or some self-proclaimed guru. What you need is someone with a real business track record to deliver key insights in a captivating way to give your team the right tools for selling in today's tough marketplace. Enter Victor Antonio, experienced executive, innovative thinker, compelling speaker. He's ready to deliver the message you need your Welcome people to, to hear, sales influence not with a canned speech, talk about but a customized I dynamic know why keynote designed to deliver results. I'm Bring your host, Victor Antonio, Victor to your Antonio, next event and today, before the competition I'm not going to talk about sales, not really, but indirectly. I got this great email.